Today I'm going to wear this one. Uh -huh. I said, I'm going to wear this pendant. Hey, Tubi's a psychic Bob. Well, I'm sitting here choosing my jewelry for today. I'm going to wear my silver pentacle. Isn't this beautiful? You know, I love the mystical pentacle. And this is one done in sterling silver. And I just, I love it. Anyways, I'm just sitting here getting ready to go out and do a video today. You know, the pentacle is a wonderful and powerful magical tool. In fact, I've been reading here in today's book, Wicca, a Guide for the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. Really excellent book. And this is actually his section on tools. Uh, this isn't actually about jewelry, but it is about the pentacle as a tool. And it says, the pentacle is usually a flat piece of brass, gold, silver, wood, wax, or clay inscribed with certain symbols. The most common, indeed the only necessary one, is the pentagram, the five-pointed star that has been used in magic for millennia. There you go, there's a picture of a pentacle right there. Looks just like my, like my pendant here. There's my pendant. Oops, I can't hold on to anything today. <laughs> it's one of these days. There's my little pentacle. See, five-pointed star, okay. The pinnacle was borrowed from ceremonial magic. In this ancient art, it was often an instrument of protection or a tool used to invoke spirits. In Wicca, the pinnacle represents the elements of earth and is a convenient tool upon which to place amulets, charms, or other objects to be ritually consecrated. It is sometimes used to summon the gods and goddesses. Pinnacles are also hung over doors and windows to act as protective devices and are ritually manipulated to draw money, um, to draw money owing to the Pinnacles Earth Associations. So it is the tool of Earth and it's a powerful charm. And what's interesting is that this is Pinnacle jewelry, but when I consecrated this when I back when I bought it, I charged the Pinnacle on top of a Pinnacle. <laughs> it's like, it just, it, anyways, we're just getting ready to go out here today and see what's going on outside and see if we're any UFO activity and reflect on the mysteries that are going on. So come on along. And Tubies, let me remind you, tomorrow is our last day uh, that this painting will be up on my website. My new painting, Skyfall, is available for free download. There are instructions over at my website. Go to psychicbob.com. And when you scroll down through, you'll see this painting there. And uh, this is my original that I brought with me to show you guys. But you can get your own copy free. Now, this is a limited edition, original Psychic Bob print. You can get it at my website. Go to psychicbob.com. Many of you have said how much you like this. This is um, called Skyfall. It's an apocalyptic picture. And it comes from the ancient scriptures of the Bible and other world religions where it talks about the end of times that the universe will collapse. So this is like the sun fading, the moon, you know, not giving its light, rivers of blood. Now, I, mean, I know it sounds kind of morbid, but the highlight is that in here, the eye of God watches and is overseeing all and will ultimately deliver us from our own destructions. And it says here, one day the sky fell, no one noticed. A lot of you said you really like this. My style here is reminiscent of Jean-Michel Basquiat's style, the neo-impressionist or neo-expressionist painting style. So a lot of you really said you enjoy this. So if you like this and want to get a copy, go to my website today, psychicbob.com. Okay, so there you go. Skyfall, available only till Saturday. Till, actually, wait, what's today? Friday. Yeah, till Saturday. Saturday will be last day. On Sunday, a new artwork will be going up on this website. So get this because you won't be able to get it after tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. Well, Tubies, we're going to head outside and see what's going on. And uh, I thought I would put on my purple veil today. I've got my dark purple veil with me. As you know, it's a sign of the Wicca. And many of the modern day Wicca are taking the sign of the veil as a, as a sign of their commitment to their spiritual path and a sign of blessing and walking between the worlds. So, let's get ready, let's go on outside. So might it be. Ooh, it's awful warm today. Maybe my veil will keep me safe from the sun too. 
<laughs> wow. A lot of clouds today. I think a storm's going to come in. It's awful hot and humid out here. But you know, let's walk out and see what's in nature. You know, part of the mystical path of the Wicca is to really attune to nature. And if you're somebody who wants to really study the craft, you got to get out and be in the world. You know, it's nice to sit in your house and meditate, but nature is calling to us. And it's in nature we discover the mysteries of the Wicca. So come on along. Do you remember that tree up home that I showed you that was shorn down and I said, poor thing, I look traumatized? Well, here's another tree that's been, been cut down. This, it's been cut down by some neighbors, I think, and they're cleaning up the trees. It'll probably regrow soon. Look at this tree. It's got uh, flowers on it. It's like, I don't know what this is, but look at those beautiful flowers on it. Can you see those? Aren't they lovely? Let's take a look at this. Wonderful. You know, whenever I'm here, I like to come visit this massive oak tree. Look at that. It goes up into the sky. This is a wonderful place for walking and reflecting, thinking about spiritual things. Look at this amazing oak. Here's its roots down here, the base. This oak is probably over a hundred years old. It's got ivy growing up it. You see, when you walk, you attune to the energy of the earth. I'm looking down here at the grass as I'm walking, feeling the vibration. You know, as I'm looking into the forest here, I hear the wind blowing and I can see the leaves. And even now, the leaves are just starting a hint that they're starting to change. Look just a little bit. If you're really observant, you'll notice a little bit of change of color. They're getting a little drier. You know, it's been a bit of a drought here, but nevertheless, we're at autumn time almost. We're in August and soon it will be September. You know, we just had Lunasa and then May Balm will be coming and we'll be into fall. You see, this is what life is about, the cycles of the seasons. Life changing and evolving. And Wicca allows us, in fact, encourages us to be observant. You know, the ancients knew the cycles of life because they studied the plants, the trees. And I think our modern day, in our modern day, where a lot of us, even the Wicca, have lost touch with that. And we have to work on that. We got to work on being back in tune with Mother Nature, you see. Look at this little path I'm going down, back into this. This is an actual nature preserve that's back here. The state made it so no building can go here. Some of it's a bit swamp land also back here. But uh, it's just lovely. It goes way, way back. I can't go into it. It's a dense, dense forest. But you can see a little bit of it here. Over that way is behind those trees is some more swamp and there's a little river that flows. It's very lush and green here. You know, when we talk about the green craft, you know, how do we know the green craft unless we get out and be among the green, the greenery, you see? And I like that. You know, when you're out, you can think about things like maybe looking for wands, okay? The witches of old use natural wands. So you might find an odd stick. Like, look at this one I found. Now that would be a wonderful one. It's dried out, so it's not wet. It could easily be carved and sanded down. And it's the right size for the hand. Look at that. Now that would be a wonderful wand. See, so there's something to think about. You know, I want to say thank you to all of you who've been, you know, inquiring about the order uh, that I founded, the Order of the Purple Cord. It's a mystical Wiccan group. And it's free to join. And uh, a lot of you even said, Psyche Bob, if I join the order, do I have to start wearing the purple veil? 
No, you don't. That's optional if you want to. You don't have to. We don't have any rules in our order. The only rule is, do you know, is the Wiccan read, harm none, do as you will. Okay, so that means we don't do black magic. We don't do curses. We treat all people with love and respect, and we respect and honor the gods and Mother Earth. Uh, if you want to read more about the Order of the Purple Court, I might encourage you to visit my website, PsychicBob.com. It has a whole uh, section there about the Order of the Purple Court. Now, if you want to join the Order of the Purple Court, it is free. You do not have to be a previously initiated Wiccan. That's another question I get. Do I have to have been a Wiccan? How much experience? We only ask that you come with an open heart and mind. Now, we do teach from a Wiccan perspective, but if you're just exploring the craft, would still like to be part of the order you're welcome to as long as you honor the wick and read we also ask that you make a purple cord Now i don't have my cord with me out here but you make a purple cord to wear uh, you can make it as a bracelet this is actually one of my cords but my big formal cords um, at home and uh, you can wear it as a cincture for your robes as a necklace as a bracelet you know, and you make a cord and you vow to honor the Wiccan Reed. And that's our only requirements. There's no membership dues. We also have a new membership manual that you can get. So uh, when you join, you send us your email requesting to join. Well, once we approve you and put you on the rolls, you'll get a membership manual as well. So you see, the Order of the Purple Cord exists for those of you who want to study the craft. We're going to be working on having some online meetings soon, so don't worry, we'll get back to that. I'm working on getting some software set up so we can do group sessions. But uh, I invite you, you know, to explore the craft and uh, join our order. Maybe we can help you on your way. You know, while I'm out here, I'm definitely keeping a watch out for UFOs. Uh, I've seen UFO activity over this area, like where my mom lives. It's very fascinating. Um, not every day I see it, but once in a while I'll see something that just looks a little interesting. So I'm definitely keeping an eye out. You see, when you're doing UFO watch, you're also attuning to nature because you're learning about the skies. You're learning about the life. You know the patterns of the birds. You know the patterns of the clouds. All of that is also part of Wicca, part of the mysticism of our tradition. <laughs> Winds blow by veil off. <laughs> and you know, while you're out walking, keep an eye out for magical staffs. Uh, you'll notice back here some branches down. This would be an excellent magical staff. It's this you know, five feet long, six feet long. You could easily take that, carve it, and make a staff out of it. I actually have enough staff projects I'm working on. I've got uh, two other staffs I recently found in the woods. I've got to clean them up and prepare them. But we'll have that as some videos coming in the coming months as well. So just hang here at Spiritual. You know we're always working on something fun. Oh, look what I just found talking about magical staffs. Look at this. You see, when you get out and walk, you find all sort of treasures. This looks good. Oh, I might have something here, a little treasure. It's a little short. I like my staves to be about as tall as I am. This isn't bad. It could certainly be used for something. Oh, 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 oh. Guys, I just realized, look at the ends. Oh, it's a stang. You know the Wiccan stang? It's a forked staff. This is an ancient sign of the god. And so if you find a staff like that, that could be a stang. Pretty magical. I love it. All right, well, there we go. Something to explore. There are a lot of butterflies and dragonflies out here today. I've been watching them. Last time I was here, I had a butterfly come and literally land on my hand. Maybe I can get one to do it today. I have kind of a spiritual connection with moths and butterflies. They seem to really like me for some reason, and they're not at all afraid of me. They come up and land on me. You see, when you get out and walk, you connect to the animals of the, the natural world. Some of you have read and said, Say, Bob, do I have a totem animal? 
I think you do. A lot of you, less, pretty much everybody has a totem animal. But the secret is, have you got out and connected with that animal? You see? The spirit of the animal is with you, whether you're in nature or not. But when you go in nature, you get confirmations. Like, I've always been drawn to moths and butterflies. But when I started going on nature, they actually approached me. I also have a spiritual and a material connection with ravens. They actually serve as guardians for me. And a while back when I was having very heavy stalking, ravens would come and literally land in front of me. And it was a sign for me to go a different path. And I would and find out later that it was good that I went a different way and I avoided being stalked and harassed. So you see, the power of the raven guides me. But the only way you know these sort of things is when you get out and actually walk in the nature. You know, walk and feel the earth, sense the energies. And see, when you get out and look closely at nature, you discover all sort of things. Here's a little patch of wild strawberries that will come up soon. These are little berries that grow in this area. Look how rich and green this area is. Just lovely. The grass is lush. Here's a beautiful evergreen, a pine tree. Forever green. Sign of the green man. And when you're in an area like this with so much greenery, you can really look for the presence of the green man. Maybe we'll spy him today. You know, it's funny, sometimes the green man's face pops up when you least expect it. You'll just be walking a log and boom, there it is. You'll see it clear as day. I've had that happen. See, but again, you only know it when you get out. I think our modern day world has made us so addicted to our computers and our cell phones that even when we're outside, we don't see nature. So I'm gonna invite you, try to take one day a week where you know you get out, you connect, and you don't bring your cell phone. Just be in nature. Don't be looking at the phone every five minutes. You know? Find out what's around you. It's so funny when you actually walk how much you see. You know, and you really pay attention. It's a mystery. Well guys, it's getting really hot out here. And I think I'm going to keep this video short today. But I am so thankful that you're here. Listen, help me out. Like this video, favorite it, share with your friends, and hit subscribe. Be part of our channel. We'd love you to be here with us. And if you want to join the Order of the Purple Cord, send me an email at psychicbobhickman at gmail.com. Visit my website, psychicbob.com, and let's connect. If you want to learn the mysteries of the Wicca, we can help you. So come and join our order. We've always got room for more members. Thanks for being here, guys. Listen, if you want to get on my schedule also for a private psychic reading, I'm still doing readings this week, even though I'm at Mom's. Give me a call at my office, 703-825-3929. We'll get you on the schedule. Or again, you can write to me at psychicbobhickman at gmail.com. You guys are best. I love you. We'll see you back here tomorrow and Saturday. We're going to have our Saturday seance. So make sure to be here. You guys are best. I love you. Until then, may all of you always blessed be. My veil is flying. <laughs> flying veil. Bye, guys.